While WPA work often consists of trying to push through small changes to the system in which we operate, critical systems thinking encourages us to step back and examine the values underlying these systems. For example, Dan Melzer's university operated for years with placement tests and remedial courses that nobody seemed to believe in. But because these were so deeply embedded, no individual stakeholder in the program felt empowered to change them. But when these stakeholders finally got together and interrogated the conceptual model underlying their curriculum, they realized that it was the source of their problem. They effected meaningful change by focusing first on replacing this model. Any veteran D WPA, I'm sure, recognizes the value of this approach. However, junior WPAs usually begin their jobs without the standing or relationships necessary to undertake this sort of broad systemic critique, even if they recognize the need for it. That was the case in 2010 when I started working at ASU, a regional, nearly open admissions university with a liberal arts focus. I was not hired to change the culture of writing there. I was the director of first-year composition. I quickly recognized that there were deeper problems with the institution's approach toward writing, but as junior faculty and the only tenure-track faculty member in rhetoric and composition, I had very little visibility, let alone influence. But Melzer doesn't suggest that WPAs rely only on their authority and influence to affect change. He encourages them to find points of leverage within their institution's priorities where the least amount of effort can enact the most amount of change. The concept of pronoia, or tactical foresight, seems relevant here. With a strong awareness of an institution's aspirations and goals for improvement, even a junior WPA with little authority can identify points of leverage. This happened for me at the end of 2012, when the state of Georgia decided to consolidate several of its colleges and universities, primarily as a cost-cutting measure. The university I just described, ASU, was merged with the nearby Health Sciences University, GHSU. These two institutions could not have been more different. This slide points out some of the differences. Imagine the task of trying to make them function as one. Change since the consolidation has been rapid and comprehensive, and the role of writing in all of it has been difficult to define because there is no frame of reference against which to define it. However, some things have been clear from the outset. In early 2013, our still unnamed new U had already been redefined as Georgia's fourth comprehensive research university. Though the liberal arts still had a place, especially in the core curriculum, the new U clearly intended to emphasize its health sciences programs. This institutional priority though perceived as a threat by our liberal arts faculty, provided several points of leverage for me. Let me give an example. The former ASU operated on a flawed conceptual model that placed second language writers into the same category as basic writers. After consolidation, we were able to address this problem quickly. As I'm sure you know, American health science graduate programs attract large numbers of international students, and research universities are deeply invested in helping them publish. We found that our arguments for supporting second language writers were far more effective when we reframed them as support for this highly valued group. We convinced the university to expand our writing center and to give us more funding to train ESL tutors. We are also making a tenure track higher in second language writing, and that person will help us develop our ESL instruction and composition as well. In other words, the graduate programs were our point of leverage for a broader change. Here's another example. In the process of consolidation, the university created some ill will in the local community. Its abandonment of the city's name, addressed in this cartoon, didn't help matters. We're aware of our need to repair our relationship with the city. Our English program created Writing and Community Service, a project tied to our professional writing and rhetoric major. We did this not only to strengthen ties to the community, but also to bring attention to professional writing which had been undervalued in ASU's conceptual model of English instruction. Now, I admit that our institutional situation is unique and that most institutions will never undergo so many changes in such a short time span. Believe me, you can be grateful for that. However, institutions do increasingly rebrand themselves and adopt new missions. If this happens to you, I encourage you to see it as an opportunity. When institutions decide to break loose of established traditions, the result is usually positive for writing 
in the midst of the chaos, you might find a point of leverage for a long overdue change.